the father is always going to be in the mindset of making your life better and more pleasurable and more exciting and more fun. And this is why all the instructions, all the training, all the correction, because he is after getting you to perform in the image of God, your true origin. The image of God for you as a woman, for you as a man, is the qualification to inherit wealth. There has to be a self-denial somehow. There has to be a dying to self somehow. You, you, you have to be subject to the Holy Spirit being your captain before he can entrust you with abundance. Because I keep telling you this, when you get abundance, there's going to be things that God going to demand of you. He going to want your time your consistency, your thankfulness. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, when it talks about God giving you abundance and making all grace abound towards you because you're sowing, saints, all grace don't abound towards you because you're praying and fasting. All grace abound towards you because you built an altar where you're giving God your provision. You're sowing. The, the, all the grace of God can't access somebody because you, you can get skinnier than Snoop. God going to put some seed in your hand for you to sow it. Because that's where your heart is going to be tested. See, I keep telling you this, uh, people of God, but you got you got, you got to listen to this revelation. Moses said, let my people go that they may worship. Those children of Israel started groaning to God and they was telling him, if you let us get free from Pharaoh, we're going to start sowing. That's what worship means. Worship means that I'm going to find a way to celebrate you in a godly state. I'm going to show you how great I think you are. That's what worship means. So when the Bible said that the Father seeks of those that will worship him in spirit and in truth, people that will recognize his greatness, his sovereignty, his power, his mightiness, and they would respond to it with mighty giving, mighty sacrifices, mighty servanthood, mighty obedience, mighty attentiveness, mighty loyalty, mighty continuance, mighty faithfulness. So when you think about worship, worship means that I'm coming on a ship that God is the captain. And I want to show him that I subject myself to his rulership. And I want to show him how great I think he is by how I respond to him. If somebody come inside of your place and you don't think they're great, you're going to walk around with your steak, looking face, looking like crawfish, lobster tails. <laughs> but if you think somebody is great, you're going to fix your place you're going to put on your best scent. You're going to look nice. You're going to dress nice. Isn't it crazy how you handle yourself according to how you think people are? If you don't value them, the same way if a cop knock at your door, you're going to be cautious of anything that could criminalize you. You notice that, right? Why do you think when people get stopped by the police, they start hiding drugs and start hiding stuff? Because their consciousness is aware of that cop's authority. They know what the cop can do. 
And so they start worshiping the cop. They worship the cop in their responses to protect anything that could criminalize them or take them to jail. So it's in everybody to respond to the authority of someone. Even children respond to their parents knowing that the parent could do something to them so they'll lie to the parent. I like my daughter Zendaya Glory Holmes because she's honest. I tell my daughter, if I ask you something, you tell me the truth even if it goes against what I stand for. And if you be honest, you get mercy. If you lie, you get wrath. God deals with you according to how honest and how adaptive you are. Now, there are some people that are honest, but they're not adaptive. And so here's what they'll do. Lord, I did that wrong. Lord, I did that wrong. But their ass going to do it wrong all the cotton picking time. That's a stupid person. <laughs> Use an asshole if every time you keep on telling God that you're wrong and you keep on doing wrong. Now you are an asshole. But at least you got one aspect correct that you recognize that you're doing wrong. That's commendable because then you got deceived people that don't even recognize that they're doing wrong. So that's a good quality that you can recognize that you're doing wrong. But the second part is do I change this and transform this through listening to the word of God? Now, saints, if you could get your recognition of wrong into the receptivity of wisdom, you have succeeded. You see what I'm saying? The recognition. But did you put the key in the ignition? I'm talking fresh out the kitchen. <laughs> shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, uh, shut up. <laughs> But, anyhow, <laughs> What are you doing with the information of something being incorrect? Are you correcting it? Or are you going to apologize for it continuously with no change? Now, since a true apology carries fruits that are different than the previous production. So, so if, if you are, are, are truly apologizing, there will be a transformation in activity. An apology is not just words. It's corresponding change in reaction and approach. True apology birthed a true worshiper. You taking notes right there, there. True apology births a true worshiper. How much are you investing in your divine mind? You have given your carnal mind hella foolishness. Some of y'all know everything except what creates money in your life. If I ask you right now, who was the president that got shot in the head? Oh, it, it, it was him. It was him. He he got shot in the head with 1954, about 555. Uh, uh, who, who, who won the Olympics? Oh, it was it was so and so. It was, uh, it was uh, Billie Jean. It was 1159. She won it at 1159. You know everything except what creates money and creates health and what creates freedom. You, you know, you know, if you really think about it, don't you got to be in a lunatic state 
to do something that makes you a prisoner to the devil? Isn't that ludicrous? Every movie that he in is boring and weird. It's like a soap opera. <laughs> Tell me how much money he paid to get a movie so I could pay it too. <laughs> you, 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 if you see a movie, ah, ah. Since when people pay for stuff, the the the, the, the product. How much? How much? How much? How much? How much was it? Is twenty dollar, forty dollar, fifty dollar, sixty, sixty? They're not playing. They they put the tip in with the price, and then they ask you for a tip afterwards. <laughs> Your nails used to cost about fifteen dollars, thirty dollars if you wanted something special. Now you spending thirty thousand for your nails. You at this thirty thousand, thirty thousand. Yeah, and then add on 10% tip. Nigga, I'll tip you. The only tip you gonna get. You talk about hustlers. They all over. I ain't gonna call no names. They all over. You go inside a mall. You go inside a side store. They, they all over. You want... Shrimp and noodles. You want shrimp fried right? No, I'm trying to get gas. Can I get gas? I come to get gas. This fuel. What? This is a gas station. <laughs> you had Chick Fil A. They taking your order. Somebody pop out. But do you want some duck sauce? Duck sauce noodles, sushi. I don't even know why people eat sushi. What you eat sushi for? Eating sushi like eating oxygen. <laughs> eating sushi like eating oxygen. You're like, what? What is that? What is you eating? You look like a dog that 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 smelt. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk about it. You acting like a dog that that lived with Snoop Dogg. That's what that's what you acting like. People be ordering sushi. <laughs> Some of y'all like sushi. It's okay. It's okay. Hey. But that's the uniqueness of people. It's, it's not so much weird. Uh, uh, people are unique in, in what they like to eat. And it is according to culture. It's amazing though. Uh, it's a uniqueness to what people uh, like to eat. Man, but... <laughs> I, I know somebody that like spaghetti, but they, they don't like the meat sauce. I know some people that don't like ketchup on a hamburger. <laughs> I, know, I know some people that don't like um they, they don't like certain stuff. I'm gonna tell you why I'm gonna be over in heaven though. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, in eternal life, well, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be at every restaurant, Jamaican restaurant, the the white people restaurant, I'm gonna be everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna be everywhere. I'm gonna be enjoying and say the thing about it in heaven. You're gonna be able to eat whatever you want and, and be good. You're gonna be 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 able to eat sweets, all that good stuff. And, and not worry about sugar, diabetes, and all those curses that come upon the health. And saints, let me just tell you something. You younger people out here, don't wait till you get older to start working out. Saints, um, if you live in a white neighborhood, you'll, you'll notice that a lot of white people, they, they start trying to run and walk and work out when they get older, but it, they be playing catch up. Call them years built up in the health, it don't be good. So take care of your health now and drink a lot of water and avoid sweets if possible. 
let your sweets intake be moderated. Like you'll have to deny yourself and eat in sweets a lot of times. I'm not saying you're not going to eat no sweets at all. I'm saying you, you got moderated. You don't want to overflow because you don't want to get sick. You don't want to tamper with your health. Sweets is okay. I'm saying you can't take it in overflow. And then some of y'all don't like to brush your teeth after you eat. <laughs> so so you definitely don't need to be eating no sweets. Thank you, baby. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You definitely don't need to be eating no sweets because you don't like to brush your teeth after you eat. Some, some, I don't know how some of y'all go to sleep and don't brush your teeth. I don't know how some of y'all wake up and don't brush your teeth. You need a toothbrush anointing. You see what I'm saying? Do you know how to wash your tongue? <laughs> Do you know how to wash your baby maker? Do you know how to wash yourself? Take a bath and wash yourself. <laughs> Take a bath. Wash yourself. <laughs> Later on. Never no, mind. I ain't going to talk about it. But they tried to say this boy, boy raped somebody. They tried to say he raped somebody. I was like, well, you should have known how he was talking real rough in the song. I kind of got He started talking in tongues at one point. Like, hey, 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 hey. If you want like that, listen, I ain't going to jog no more. Because I can't be running on this route and you a Rottweiler. You turn that James Brown on side. Ah! Hey. Take a bath and wash yourself. Take a bath. <laughs> Show me the soap you're working with. Show me the soap you're working with. What soap you working with? And since then, you got them people that want to take a bath, but they don't go inside the actual. They they want to take a shit. They want to take a bath per se, but they don't go inside no shower or nothing like that. They they just they just stand up at the sink. You're not no bird, baby. You're not no pelican. <laughs> you think you're a pelican? Get your foots inside the shower and shower, man. Take your time. Meditate. Be inside there. Meditate. Think about life. Let God talk to you. Sing some worship songs. You know you sound good inside the shower. Sing some worship songs. We give you praise in the sanctuary. Do something. Do something. Become a choir in there. Take some time. You're not no pelican. Don't be buying no wipes. Wipes is illegal in Christ Jesus. <laughs> don't, don't buy no wipes. <laughs> don't buy no wipes, man. <laughs> We not wiping, you not no baby, you not no Tyler, man. Do you know how to wash your tun tun? Huh? Do you know how to wash your baby neck? <laughs> Do you know how to wash? Do you know how to wash your arms, your legs, your 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 take a bath and wash it? That, that was a new series. Take take a bath and wash yourself. That was a new series coming soon. It's, a, it's coming soon. Um, it'll come before you if you don't know how to wash yourself, you see. <laughs> before you if you don't know. So, so, so there is a, a, a power in the spirit that not only moves your mind to recognize evil that's in you, 
but it moves your mind to eradicate that evil that's in you. There's a power in the spirit. There's a power in the spirit that not only you, 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 it, it moves the brain to identify what's wrong, but it also moves the brain to change what is wrong. See, Jesus was preaching and teaching because he wanted the people to not only hear the truth, but wear the truth and bear the truth so that they could appear the truth. Or let me say this, repair the truth to their life. So they not only had took what they was hearing, but now it was their responsibility to transfer what they heard into their decisions and choices so that they could have the results that that truth brings. See, seed sowing is a truth. But until you sow, the truth about the seed will never happen for you. You will never see God multiplying your seed sown, though this is what he said he going to do. Because there's no seed being sown. So the truth, though it is truth, it is not benefiting you if you're not bearing it and repairing it within your decisions, within your life. Are you eating the bread from the cafeteria of heaven or you're eating the bread of devils? The bread of devils is camouflaged in temptation. That's why when Satan tempted Jesus, turned the stone into bread, it was during the temptation hour. So the bread of Satan is fed to you through temptation. Your temptation is a restaurant. And the bread that comes to you is camouflage in evil desires, evil appetite, an unrenewed mind. Your unrenewed mind is planted in the world. So an unrenewed mind has spent more time with world than word. You think about that. Our unrenewed mind has spent more time with the world than word. And so therefore, Satan's appetite is brewing within you. That's, that's, that's what temptation is all about. I was outside of the presence of God. So what was outside of his presence is now overwhelming me. The Bible said, Apostle James, who's, who walked with Jesus, was a part of Peter, James, and John. Uh, uh, James said that God is not tempted by evil, nor does he tempt any man. Because temptation comes from the system of Babylon. You notice I keep taking you back to Babylon, right? Because I'm giving you a strong revelation in this hour about delivering yourself out of your Babylonian nature. You've been living as a Babylonian for too long. You're not supposed to be living as no Babylonian. You're really supposed to be exemplifying the power of God, the grace of God, the glory of God. But that Babylonian nature, it repels, it blocks off God's counsel. And it says, no, I'm not doing it. Saints, a stubborn woman is the ugliest woman that you ever meet. 
I call her big. I call her Bigfoot. <laughs> I almost call her Lisa. Leslie, no, I, ah, but I call her Bigfoot. You see what I'm saying? I ain't tripping. I mean, Lisa, Leslie, cute. You see what I'm saying? Back in the day, when you were young, everybody looked good. Some woman looked like a Tyrannosaurus. Oh, she looked good. You be in school, four eyes looking girl. She got, she looked like Malcolm in the middle in there. She just like, Oh, she just cute, boy. And then you also got to catch when you're horny, everybody look good. You be dreaming about everybody. See, some of y'all have had sex in life with no license. The Holy Ghost didn't have you having sex. You trespass against God because you think you bad. I hope your tune tune fall off. You keep playing. <laughs> I hope your dick don't work. There's a consequence. Say, so I was young and ain't like I didn't feel sexual. I didn't have sex. Some of y'all had sex illegally without no license because you think you're entitled. And then some of y'all had sex because you continue in a generational curse. Your mama was the same way. Your daddy was the same way. They had sex without a license either. The Holy Spirit, they had it on their schedule, so they went and did it. So, so you, 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 you fulfilling Satan's prophecy. Don't come to me if you having sex illegally and then think I'm going to pray for you when you get cut. I hope you I hope your tun tun fall off. <laughs> I, no, I, I want you to understand. I'm telling you right now, I hope your tun tun fall off. I hope your dick don't work. And so I I'm not I'm not a friend. <laughs> I I hope I hope that happens. You gotta learn your lesson. You your your even your body parts, when God give you a penis and a vagina. It's not for you to decide what you're going to do with it. That that penis and vagina belongs to God. It don't matter if you think it's big or small, if you think it's tight or right. That vagina and that penis belongs to the Holy Ghost. And if you go use it without his permission, and he didn't guide you, he didn't promote you to that, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. Saints, fornication is sex that God didn't schedule. That's what fornication is. God didn't schedule the sex, but it happens. That's what fornication is. Fornication. Adultery is when you dream about having sex with somebody that don't belong to you. And, and I know adultery is another thing as well, but I'm talking to you from the aspect that Jesus had revealed in the Gospels where he said, if you look at a woman to lust after her, well, well if you look at your wife, you could do, you could look at your wife to want her, but why is that not considered adultery? Because you own her. And that go both sides. If you are a woman and that's not the man that God wants you to, 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 to desire, you in adultery, in the heart. If you, if you, if you desire to sleep with someone that you don't own, says I don't, I don't desire to sleep with a woman that I don't own. I don't. That's that's you know, when you encounter people, they'll like you. You just meet them for the first time. You don't be impressed. Because you like this, this. See, I think different. I think different. Let, and let me show you how you, when you feel with the spirit, how you think. I think deeper. I don't, I don't, let, let me just show you something. I, I always start like this. I don't just think sex. I think about this. What does this person want to accomplish in the spirit? Nothing. How 
How do they spend their time? Who are they in covenant with after sex? That's what I think about. I think about the, the, the person. See, some of you all, if you really think about stuff, why would you want to sleep with a man that got 30,000 evil spirits? Ancestral spirits still with him. Why would you want that man to enter you? That sperm count is carrying a transference of demons. Why would you want to sleep with a woman that is full of devils? The Bible call it, uh, uh, Solomon said that she is a pit. She's a whore. And everybody that go into her are in the bed of the dead. They enter into death. Holy men want holy women and holy women want holy men. Because sex is a, uh, uh, it, it is a, um, it is it is an entanglement with the kingdom you live in. See, when God created sex, it, it wasn't for two different kingdoms to intermingle. It was for the kingdom of God to multiply itself as another person. You see, what I'm saying. So the child that comes out is. A, is uh, extension, continuation of the kingdom of God. Your vagina don't belong to you. It belongs to the Holy Ghost. And if you misuse that vagina, you going to answer to God for it. That penis that you got don't belong to you. So stop looking at it. You going to answer to God if you misuse that penis. Saints, and here's how you protect yourself. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord. Everybody, Lord, whatever you don't want me to do, I'm praying that you would possess me with your will because I don't want to do it. I pray that I would walk in your wisdom to use everything that you have given me by your standards, by your statutes. Your body parts is a test. God gave you those body parts. It's a test. You misuse those body parts, you're going to answer for it. The Bible said that your body is the members of Christ. So God considers every part of your body his member. So imagine if you use his member without his permission. Oh. Oh. Let's go to um, look what Revelation chapter fourteen says. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth. And to every nation, to kindred, and a tongue, and people, and tongue and people. Think about this. This angel is an evangelist. A prophet. A teacher and a pastor. This angel had the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth. So this angel is an angel of the gospel. Whoa. Saying with a loud voice, fear God. See, you see how the gospel works? 
by respecting God. Fear God. He said with a loud voice. Why, did, why does the sound of the voice matter? Because it represents passion. When you get loud, it, it, it is evidence of your passion, your persuasion about something, how in tune you are with something, how committed, how, how entangled you are with the revelation or uh, information that you believe in. Look, look, look. The angel said, fear God and give glory to him. So watch this here. I want you to catch this. The angel said, fear God, respect him. And then the angel said, start giving to him. This in your Bible, Revelation 14, verse six and seven. Fear God and give. See, I, I, want, I, I want you to stay right there. Look at what the angel of the gospel come with the, with, with the passion about. Respect. Give. Respect. This the angel of the gospel. Respect. And give. Watch this here. Give glory to him. Saints, I want you to catch this here. The seed is the glory, the, 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 the Shekinah glory of God. The seed is the Shekinah glory of God. So even when you are a seed sower, you are a giver of glory. Whoa. Shh. Shh. Did you hear what I just said? I said that when you are a seed sower, you are a giver of glory. Whoa. A sower is a glory giver. Imagine we hear about God giving glory and God carrying glory, but imagine having a ministry of giving glory to God. Now watch this here. Let me show you something. When glory from you collide with glory from God, wealth is conceived. Oh, this heavy. I said when glory from you and glory from God collide, wealth is conceived. Ah, a seed sower is a, a glory given spirit to the Lord God Almighty. So the seed sowing ministry is a gospel fruit. A gospel fruit. The angel of the gospel also screams that you must become a giver to God. Watch this here. Give glory to him. Not your car insurance. Not your house note. Not your life insurance. But give glory to him. Now, 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 look, look at this here. Remember I told you that seed sowing is a judgment. The seed is a judgment as well. And look, after the angel said, give glory to him, to step into giving, look what the angel said. For the hour of his judgment is come. The angel saying, you got to recognize he coming to examine whether or not 
you like this. You fear him, you respect him, you give it glory to him. He gonna inspect your fruit. He gonna look and see, and he gonna decide whether or not you were a true worshiper, you was a false worker of iniquity. Look what it says. And worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Look what the angel is saying. Worship him. Make him the priority of your day, your moments, your words, your activity. Seek to please him. Find out where he wants you to be, where, who he wants you to be, and worship. Give your undivided attention, your undivided, undivided attentiveness, undivided servanthood, undivided honor to him. Worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Look at verse eight. And there followed another angel. Watch this here. Here come the economic angel. You see the gospel angel come first. See the gospel get preached. And here come the economy of God afterwards. Look, look, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, look at verse eight. And there followed another angel. Look what it says. Another angel saying Babylon is falling. H how did this angel know? Because it's an economic angel. It understands economies. Not only the economy of God, but the economies that was built up to defy God and distract humanity from the Lord's economy. Look where it says, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. That great city. Because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Look at how the angel of economy, the supernatural invisible economy of God, look how it proceeds, how it comes after the gospel angel. So when Jesus was preaching the gospel to the poor, after the, the, the angel of the gospel was moving with Jesus, now the angel of the the angel of the economy came after the angel of the gospel. So, so when the gospel enters you, God tells you about fearing him, walking in wisdom, walking in wisdom in your relationships, your decisions, your time, your schedule, your words, your reactions, your behavior, your conduct, your body language, everything, attitude. Then he teaches you about giving glory to him. Then he teaches you about time, how judgment has come to your life. You don't got time to say no. Because the enemy already want your soul to enter into the land of the dead. Eternal fire fire and brimstone, the bottomless pit. The enemy already looking for your soul to make a laughing stock out of you because you're God's elect. And then here come the economy angel. After God teach you the gospel, the economy angel is there to demonstrate 
that God system is greater, is more mightier, is more pleasurable. And saints, that's where all abundant life, abundant life, abundant life, abundant life is happening for me right now on the earth. I receive due season on every seed of honor that I've sown into the Lord. I receive the prophet's reward. I receive the economy of the great God, Jehovah. Silver and gold is manifesting in my life. The gates of heaven, the gates of wealth are open over me and they shall not be shut day nor night. Wealth gates shall not never be shut that men may minister unto me the wealth of the Gentiles. Ah, think, 